Welcome to Tribal Trails. I'm glad to be with you today. In a previous program, we shared how Tribal Trails emerged from a dream into a reality of having a television gospel program. This year, we are celebrating 40 years of Tribal Trails. How exciting to see God lead. He has provided guests, equipment, finances, and a studio. Through all these years, we have had fishermen, trappers, builders, carpenters, pastors, healthcare workers, plumbers, artisans, and many, many more everyday people. God has been good to us. One of the first guests to share on Tribal Trails was Bert and Liz Janiel. We have appreciated their testimonies, music, Bible teaching, and many, many talents. We are very thankful for all their help they have been to us over the years. We are very sad that in September 2021, during the pandemic, our dear friend Bert suddenly passed away. One Sunday afternoon, we reminisced about the beginnings of Tribal Trails. Bert and Liz, thank you for spending some time and just visiting and just recollecting about how did Tribal Trails really get started? Well, well, first of all, thank you for having us this afternoon. And uh, but I, but I remember that we went to a c conference at a Living Water Bible Camp just mm -hmm. uh, just uh, south of PA here, mm -hmm. and uh, then we were there and uh, and there was a man by the name of uh, Derek. His his cock, He was looking for recruits that maybe might want to help. With uh, mm. with a TV program, mm. so uh, so uh, so he kind of approached us and when we were at the camp there, and because he saw us uh, singing a few songs and give a testimony and all that. So, anyways, he he said, "Would you?" Uh, he said, "We're talking about this, the TV program." He said, and "We're kind of looking for somebody, maybe to help, and I don't know if it's going to happen or not." He said. So he said, uh, "He said, would you be interested in helping us?" Uh, what did you when he said TV? What came into your mind? I thought it was just a, a testimony time or or a sing song time or something like that. So, anyways, and I said, "Well, I'd be uh, yeah, I'd I'd be willing to help." God saw me and he knew about my weakness. And he knew that I was seeking deep in sin. He heard the prayers, he saw the tears of all my loved ones. God reached way below the bottom for me that night. God reached way bottom and took my hand. He didn't care if I was the world's most foolish man. He took my heart, he took my soul, he took my mind. God reached way below the bottom for me that night. And my thought was, well, this TV, uh, NCM wants to start it. And I was thinking, well, this is probably five or five or 10 years down the road. And mm -hmm. so I said, and I said, yeah, I'll, I'd be willing to help. But, but in the back of my mind too, I, I was thinking, what is this stuttering boy going to be doing on doing on TV. I said, you know, it'll kind of never happen. So I'm willing to do it, but uh, is it ever going to happen? Yeah. And, and you know, and it didn't take long, like yeah. maybe maybe just a few years after that, they started, yeah. they started this. I mean, it just happened very quickly. And, yes. and so, you know, so, I think the first time that they taped us, they came to our hometown there in the Cormorant. Oh, okay. uh, we were just living in the house there, and uh, so they came there and they did the first, uh, out of, 
I mean, they interviewed us, of course, they didn't make a program there, they make promo. it, yeah, the promo. So, so that was the, the first that we heard about that. Wow. Yeah. I want God's way to be my way as I journey here below. For there is no other pathway that a child of God should go. For the way may be dark and rough, if he leads me that see not. I want God's way to be my way every day. I want God's way I journey here below, for there is no other pathway that a child of God should go, though the way may be dark and rough, he believes me that he's not, I want God's way to be my way. What did you think, Liz? When they first came to Cormorant, okay. I was just, I was too shy to go on there. I was just scared and I didn't want to be on. Yeah. I just didn't really, really think much about it. Like, okay. until, they, until they started asking me if I can share my testimony on there. Oh, okay. And so I finally got that thing in my heart that this was real. It was real, you know, and so I decided within my heart that I would uh, that I would do it. I would share my testimony on there and yeah. and proclaim the testimony of the Lord, and and from there the Lord just really made it real that this was real. This yeah. was real. This was going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah. and thank God that they send those people to. Cormorant and that was the start of my first time I heard of tribal trails and that. Okay. It was a good thing. It was a good thing. Yeah. From there, how did it go? Well, I think, you know, I mean, just like Liz said, you know, it, it was kind of scary at first. I mean, yeah. I remember there were a lot of retakes, you know, even singing <laughs> the retakes and that. I mean, and then, and then we would do good, yeah. but the camera people would make a mistake, and so we had to do it over again. After a while, it got to be fun. Yeah. But we got some encouragement, too, after uh, watching a few of the programs. And I remember this one, uh, this one the pro program, this lady from uh, on, uh, Ontario, she was giving her testimony, and she was, she was weeping, weeping as she gave her testimony. I'm thinking... Wow, I mean that really touched my heart, and I'm thinking, you know, this this program, I mean, it's going to go someplace. There's, like, you know, it's been it's been almost almost 40 years now. Who can move the mountains that are rendering you today? Who can block them up like pebbles, toss them from your way? Who can prove his power when a Christian is to pray? It is Jesus, yes, he's the one. Jesus holds all power in his mighty hand divine. He's the one who heals the sick, he's a perfect peace of mind. He makes all impossible, and he's a friend of mine. Yes, it's Jesus, yes, he's the one. Who can give you power when the temple to cleanse the heart from sin, give victory every day. Who can heal the broken heart and wipe the tears away? It is Jesus, yes, he's the one. Jesus holds all power in his mighty hand divine. He's the one who heals the sick, he's a perfect peace of mind. He makes all impossible and he Blessed Jesus, yes, he's the one. Who can open gates of 
heaven and it's time to die. Who can guide you down those streets way up in the sky? Who can give eternal life and a mansion way up high? It is Jesus, this is the one. Jesus holds all power in his mighty hand in fire. He's the one who healed the sick. He's a perfect peace of mind. He makes all impossible and he's a friend of mine. This is Jesus, this is the one. God did many miracles to bring it in, into, into being. And, uh, and I think one of the miracles is God touching the hearts of our people mm. to share. Yeah. And they're so brave. You know, over and over and over, mm -hmm. you hear what has God done in their lives, yeah. and to to yeah. tell anybody and mm -hmm. everybody, this is what I was, yeah. and this is how yeah. I am today. It's, yeah. it's 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 just it's just a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's just a blessing. Yeah. Well, you notice that this program is not polished, <laughs> like it's not polished. Yeah. I mean, we don't. Uh, Sit around and uh, say what a yeah the pretender. Well, somebody tells you what to do and how to do it. I mean, they just go up there and, and they just they do it. And so it, it's uh, yeah, and so it's, it's been really good. We get a blessing in that way, but yet we get a blessing from from uh, the people that really say they really enjoy the program. So would you say God has blessed that program through the years? Absolutely, as, as far as as far as I could see, I mean, you know, I guess the reason is that, you know, it's it's not polished. And another thing about that too, they never ask for money. Never ask for money. They're not pleading for money. And people know that a program like this costs money. And so, I mean, the Lord just blesses by, by sending money. I mean, they have a little caption about, uh, you know, this program is paid by by uh, by the people yeah. and so they yeah it's 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 been a real blessing a king and a beggar God has started the program yeah. and kept it going through the years, oh, yeah. and He still is today. Yeah. It's His program, it's his yeah. program and yeah. He provides. Yeah. He not only 
pro uh, provides for it financially, yeah. but he provides for it through the people mm -hmm. who share and give their testimony, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I think what I love an awful lot about the program is the honesty of our people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. They, they share. This yeah. is what I was, yeah. but this is what I am today. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. I've been very blessed with the many testimonies of our Native people, you know. So many of them, they love Jesus so much. And it just touches my heart so much. And, you know, like I said, the honesty of... The transparency. Transparency of, the, of our people. Like, you know, they're not ashamed to tell of yeah. where God brought them out of. Like, yeah, you, know, know. you know, for myself, I, know. I like to share the truth. I don't yeah. hide behind a bush. Yeah. <laughs> Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What is God doing in Tribal Trails today? I think there was more people watching, watching Tribal Trails and we are in front of the camera more and that, I guess I could talk about that little stuttering boy uh, the 40 years ago that, yeah. I mean, that didn't didn't think he could do this kind of thing. And many times people say, you know, people tell me, they uh, kind of tell me, they said, encouraging me, keep on doing it, keep on doing it. I mean, uh, I guess like Liz was saying, you know, when I say it's not polished, surely I'm not polished. Uh, the first host I think was, uh, was, well, one of the first hosts was uh, Liz's brother, Fred Evans. And so, and so you know, it was kind of a uh, Fred kind of started, and then of course, I mean, he was I mean, he was probably the one that got our names involved. And I think it's not only you, but it's yeah. it's it's the other believers, you know, that oh, encourage each other. Absolutely. And, yeah. and if yeah. that one can mm -hmm. share what God has done yeah. in their life, I yeah. can do that too, you yeah. know. And God has worked. Yeah in many hearts. Yeah. Yeah. John Thiessen says, when he was general director of, mm -hmm. of the mission, and he said he was flying out through, throughout Canada mm -hmm. and had a real burden for the native people. And he said, when he went into every home, isolated, you know, people mm -hmm. that our villages, a lot of our villages are yeah. isolated. Yeah. And uh, Christians don't, can't seem to get in touch with one another. And he said one of the things he noticed that every native home had a TV, mm -hmm. you know, and God, God burdened mm -hmm. him for that, yeah. that how, how can we yeah. connect our brothers and sisters in mm -hmm. Christ to yeah. encourage one another? Because yeah. alone, standing alone in the village is very hard. Yeah. And do you think that dream was, came into reality? Right. I think it has. Yeah. I think it has. Yeah, maybe. Like I, I remember even Fred mentioning something like that. He said, "You know, every home has got a got a got a TV, and every home has got a, a VCR." God had a plan for tribal trails that included Bert. He probably doubted that God could use him, because we've heard Bert say, "What is this stuttering boy going to be doing on TV?" <laughs> In Exodus chapters 3 and 4, Bert tells about Moses at the burning bush. God had a job for Moses too. Moses complained to God about his own inability to speak and lead God's people. But God still used Moses. So Bert, even though he saw his own inability to speak as a problem, he could do this because he knew a man who can. I can't take a heart that's broken 
make it all over again But I know a man who can I can take a soul that's in sin Wash it white, white as snow But I know a man who can Some may call him Savior The Redeemer of all men I call him Jesus For he is my dearest friend and when I think that no one loves me And my life is out of hand Will I know a man who can? I can't walk upon the waters No, I can't calm the raging sea but I know a man who can I can call blind eyes to open Nor the lame to walk again But I know a man who can so Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he is my dearest friend. And when I think that no one loves me and my life is out of hand, will I? No, a man who can. Oh, yes, I know a man who can. And I thought of a story in Exodus chapter uh, chapter three about uh, the Moses, where uh, where uh, Moses was in the palace for forty years, and then he. Then he killed a guy, and then he went to the back, back side of a desert, and he was there for uh, 40 years, uh, working for his brother, uh, his uh, father-in-law Jethro. And anyways, one day he was out there in the uh, out there in the desert, and he saw a burning bush, a burning bush burning, and he said, "Hmm, what is that?" And so he turned aside and he went there. And here was the burning bush, and God started to speak to him from that burning bush. And you know, and, uh, and uh, God saw Moses walking, and he was walking one way, and all of a sudden he seen the burning bush and he turned aside. And, and I think that's, uh, and that's what happened to me, just walking along, and all of a sudden this idea came that we should be doing this. And, and it was almost, almost as if it's, uh, I mean, somebody asked me, you should be the host to do this thing. And I'm, and I'm kind of saying, who, me? And here Moses was saying these things. He, he was saying, uh, it, God, God spoke to him from the burning bush. And here he's giving these excuses to a God because God wanted him to go back to Egypt and take the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he's saying, who, me? And his, uh, and his first excuse was, uh, who, me, go to Pharaoh? You know? And, uh, uh, and these excuses, you know, and he's saying also, and who, will, uh, and who will go with me? Anybody will go with me? He said, even if I do go, I mean, they're not going to believe what I'm, what I'm going to say. And, you know, and so, uh, and then in chapter 10, 
Well, chapter uh, 4 and verse 10, and this, and this was my excuse. And I'll read the verse, and the verse says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither hereto, nor since thou hast spoken unto my servant, but I am slow of speech and I'm slow of tongue. Then another verse says this. He says, I'm a stammerer, I'm a stutterer. I can't do this. And that's just the way I felt. I felt, you know, I'm a stammerer, I'm a stutterer, and I can't do this. And I was, and I was afraid. And, uh, and we could see that uh, Moses, was a, Moses wasn't afraid to do this. But anyways, God said, God said this to him in verse, uh, in verse 11. He says this, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who has made, uh, uh, make it the dumb talk, or else the deaf to hear, or else the, or else the blind to see? Have not I done this, I the Lord? And the Lord was telling me, I made your tongue, I made your mouth, and I made all that. I will be with you. And so, you know, so after a lot of thought about it, and I'm saying, yes, I guess, uh, I guess he did help me out. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, none go with me till I will follow. Turning back, no turning back. 